I have a question though. I, you're in a unique position as a, as an athlete and a doctor. Do you immediately diagnose an in, your injury? Oh, your totally. Injury? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's where the advantage lies, and not so much in the middle of a fight, obviously, yeah, yeah. but when you're training, knowing the difference between when a pain is like an ache and you could push yeah. through, yep. or like, oh, this is a problem, you can't train more. Coast. Yeah. Oh, did we start? I don't know. Everyone's staring at us, so I think we started. Dr. Mike is here. Yeah, I wow. I am here. I'm Check ready to out. save some lives. Sweet. Oh, wow. How do we start? <laughs> That's, now that is a way to begin a show. Well, I've, we're already fixing uh, your cough post Yeah, uh, I'm getting over some like. sickness, yes. Um, so, excuse my voice. I'll get there. Your voice is always like that. Yeah, it's especially bad today. It's weird so that you can I'm just sing. putting out a disclaimer. What's that? It's, it's weird that you can sing. You know what it is? It's um Do you think that's what it is about? because my you mom sing had so it much? Bad. My mom my, I remember my mom always clearing her throat. Always. Really? Uh, is it an yeah. acid reflux thing? I guess, but I can't figure out what triggers it really. Mm. I've tried to It's not hits from the out. mad hits from the bong, is it? <laughs> no. <laughs> Isn't that not. weird? Because I, I take... definitely ruled that out very early on. Right. You got that one taken yeah. care of? I'm surprised I don't sound more like you. Yeah, what's up with that? I don't know. Maybe well, ask Dr. Mike. Well, actually, when we're talking about acid reflux, it might not be the traditional acid reflux most people think of. Eh. It's something called silent reflux, where a little bit of acid can actually go through the esophagus without getting the typical heartburn. And then it actually inflames the entire voice box, creates mucus, where you have to clear your throat, you have some voice changes, and that lasts weeks, even months sometimes, just from that single episode. That and that could be from like right. coughing a lot, um, some people get it from like bench press, increasing intra oh, wow. pressure. Huh. Yeah. Oh, from just from exercise. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I always just distribute it to food, but I just can't. But remember. it could be food too. He eats anything. Anything. <laughs> <That's>, this <laughs> is true. So do I though. I pretend that I eat like a clean diet, but Last sometimes night, I take mad hits from the bong and eat cheeseburgers <laughs> and fries like a maniac. I could be paying the price last night. We had uh, goat patties Ooh. and uh, oxtail and crab rangoon. Ew. Mm, that's not Man, bad. he eats spiders' asses. I don't know. <laughs> oh Have you guys had crickets? Yes. Yeah. I'm curious about that. Because it sounds like a good source it of protein. It tastes like dirt. Yeah. Dirt? Yeah. yeah. Not like chicken or something? No. No, no. there's no chicken in there. No. <laughs> it's just crunchy. Yeah. It's kind of airy. Like there's mm. nothing really yeah. happening. It's not like soft shell crab? Not at all. Oh. No, if it's it, like just the shell. <laughs> just yeah. the shell. Right? It's pretty lame. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty lame. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, like if yeah. it's for the video, you know what I mean? Right. Like if for the gram, like, hey man, but like Otherwise, actual no. like okay. taste wise, I'm like What well, remember we went, we oh, went yeah. out, we had mealworms. Yeah. And we mealworms, had scorpions, scorpions, ants. Ants. Was this on Fear Factor? Where were you guys sucked. doing? No, we, man, he just there was a restaurant. <laughs> loves going to Oh, let's go eat worms. <laughs> He goes on vacation, starts eating spiders' asses. Like, I'm talking big, fat, hairy ass where it just pops full of, like, spider poo cream ate, in his mouth. I ate a tarantula in Cambodia. So oh, wow. disgusting. And how is that? That's not great. Do you recommend? I can't uh, even tell you the health imp implications of that. Wait, that's tell me. healthy. No, I can't tell you because oh, I have no can't. idea. It's not something oh. I learned in medical school. Oh, okay. You didn't research that. No. That's good. Right. I should have. I'm glad I didn't. That I'm glad no one knew that. Yeah. Going into it couldn't it. be that bad though, right? I mean, you never know. Well, like, what if there's be... like poison? Right. Although I have been doing some research on spiders biting people and creating like a serious reaction. Yeah. And it's actually really rare. Like in North America, for a spider to cause a fatality is unheard of. What well, and it's funny because we we are live in the world of injuries and, and whatnot and infections. Hell and yeah. We know. So staph infections. Staph we, kind of, we know the, the early signs of it, and everyone thinks it's a spider bite. Yeah. I've yeah, why told, is that? Like, I, I have a lot of patients Is that just the default? Yeah. I've said – a guy went to get in a jacuzzi once at a pool at the, the Costa Resort, and I go, hey, man, don't put that in the water with <laughs> yeah. me. And he goes, what? I'm like, that thing on your leg. And he's like, it's a spider bite. I'm like, dude, uh. that's staph. And then – 
I convinced him, to, first of all, to not put it in the water with me. And then I told him and he, that he wouldn't believe me. And I told his wife, I'm like, I've had it so many. That's staff. Like, and tomorrow it's going to get really bad. So he goes to the hospital. He comes back all bandaged up. He's like, oh, man, yeah. well, how did you know? And I'm like, but that's what I've I mean. Like spider bite thing. Is that like a Mandela factor? Like everyone has just come to. Yeah, I don't know where people get the spider bite thing. Are you looking for a delicious and nutritious snack that packs a real protein punch? Each one ounce serving of wonderful pistachios contains six grams of protein, giving you over 10% of your daily value. Pistachios are known for their protein power, fiber, and better for you, unsaturated fats. For a combination that may help keep you feeling fuller longer. It's one of the highest protein nuts out there. I got the call that Wonderful Pistachios was a sponsor. Yeah. When I literally was coming back from the grocery store had it in the grocery bag. You bought it. I, I buy them. The uh, best part, wonderful pistachios come in a variety of flavors and sizes, perfect for enjoying with your family and friends or taking them with you on the go during your summer adventures. Check out wonderfulpistachios.com to learn more about how these little green wonders can power up your day. Hey. Someone just added Punch Tony. Don't. Did they? Dude. <sighs> But I will say, you know, there's a unique condition from hot tubs called hot tub folliculitis, where it's a specific bacteria called Pseudomonas that infects a hair follicle and gets really bad, looks like staph, but requires a different set of antibiotics. A different set. Yeah, because it's like it lives in that moisture environment, that bacteria. But it's not staph. No, because staph is a bacteria, staph aureus. Oh, okay. And this is Pseudomonas. Where so you saying someone bacteria. comes in with that and leaves it in the water? Correct. Or and it thrives in the, in the water, yeah. And you Wait. get it from going into the hot tub. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, man. So frequently I'll that have just a patient scare me. us oh, away from hot dude, tubs. Don't yeah. say it. <laughs> I like jacuzzis, man. <laughs> Enjoy the jacuzzi. Nah. Nah. <laughs> not anymore. Just make sure it's well serviced. Because most of them are not. Oh, if I see like a hair in it or something, I'm like, that's it. I got to save a lot of Well, the hair is okay. That's not the problem. What happened? The hair is not the problem. Yeah, but so you can't see what the problem is, exactly. right? So just may as well avoid all public jacuzzis no, is what you're saying. I'm not trying to Wait fear monger Wait Dr. Party Fail. <laughs> <laughs> What's up with this guy? Hey, welcome to the show. Don't go in jacuzzis ever again. <laughs> that was one of my favorite. I don't need to stay in a hotel ever again. I'm just going to get a tent. You ruined it. What about saunas? Can, you, can, can I die in there? For that? Can you this is coming it? from a professional skateboarder, yeah, fighter, and you're worried about uh, an infection from a jacuzzi? J trust me, he's not going to change his lifestyle <laughs> at all from this conversation. You don't know me, bro. <laughs> I will seriously not go in it. Okay, I'll go in a. If I go to like the Four Seasons, I'll go in that one. But that's, that's, that's not looking good for me right now. But if well, I go the to the uppity a, crowd isn't infected? Where? The, the uppity crowd isn't infected? Nah, they're not. Nah. That's okay. my belief. Rich people don't have staff. <laughs> Poor people do. Okay. <laughs> Well, I, I got staff a lot. And I it was got, because I, I was always hanging out with poor people. <laughs> okay. I got staff a lot. When you had the video game? <laughs> before after and, and before game. and after, yes. And after. Oh yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah. All right. Well then yeah, I'm gonna go on jacuzzi. <laughs> when you had the video game. <laughs> no, it stopped. All right, because I figured it would clear up. <laughs> because I was skating elitist ramps. Yes. That were perfectly they clean the elitist ramps. Absolutely. With yeah. Lysol wipes. I've yeah. seen yeah. it. Marble. I, I was spray skating his in ramp marble. down every morning. <laughs> <laughs> There's people in the in those jumpsuits. That they and they shh. Okay, it's good to go, it Jason. Got so, it got so weird. My ramp, like, through the COVID uh, lockdowns. Yeah. Because everyone's trying to alternate sessions and only oh, skate yeah. with their little crews. And, right. Yeah. Did sure that ever, ever – did you did you ever meet, like, a group of people they met at the same time? And they're like, who gets the ramp? Not really, but I was. I think it was just more agreed upon that if you're coming to skate, you're coming to skate. And if there's people there, there's people there. If you've got a cold, don't come. Yeah, it's just like, yeah, if you're hacking on the deck, maybe sit one out. What about gloves? And this is outdoors. Gloves. It's indoors. indoors. Oh, indoors. Okay. Yeah, it's a big space, though. Okay. I, I am curious about this because it is something that I experienced a lot through the, I would say, maybe 10 years ago, a little more, um, where there was just this recurring MRSA staff, especially with uh, what we do. And it felt like it was getting worse and worse. Well, what happens is if you get it once, unless you fully eliminate it, your body's now colonized yeah. uh -huh. with this bacteria that's resistant to penicillin, which is essentially what MRSA means. And 
if you're colonized with it, that means it lives on your skin normally and it doesn't penetrate your skin. But now if you have a cut and there's an opening, it can get in there and cause an infection. We actually have some patients that we check in the hospital in their noses before like we even see them for a medical condition to see if they're colonized with staph. That's MRSA. You I got check MRSA them. on my, on my uh, privates. Yes. On my, <laughs> I got it on the low. Go on. I got it on the, yeah, I got, I, I, the gonadal region. I did a, I did a, I, I, oh man, how do you, I blue balled myself on my zipper and the zipper oh. cut it, my, and then that. That's from um, the Ben Stiller movie, Something About Mary. Yeah, yeah. but I didn't zip it up in Beans it. about oh. the Franks. Okay. It just, the <laughs> Frank hit it. <laughs> yeah, oh, I got a. Oh, you got MRSA on the I Frank. I scratched the lower Frank. Oh. oh wow. And then, and I was That's like. That's a vascular region too, a lot of blood. Yeah. And then I had but to. But isn't that a good thing for infections? What? I mean. I guess it's not a bad thing. I felt like it was pretty bad myself. But that's like it's an easy way for it to spread too, you know? Okay. Yeah, but uh, antibiotics, they're like a good friend of mine. Did and you have to get an IV? No, nah, no, nah, I just took like heavy antibiotics. I think I got a shot in the butt too for that one. Did you? So what? what's interesting to me is when someone gets a cut, I don't automatically recommend antibiotics on a cut. No. You got to, if it, only if it gets infected, exactly. right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'm you, did you start right away with antibiotics? No, not until no. I I I was like something is I, something's it's not well, healing. Got it. Okay. As fast as I and I'm like something's wrong. Well, that's good. So, but I, you're saying don't do antibiotics as a preventative because you'll build up a tolerance. Not even a tolerance. It just it doesn't help it heal well. And sometimes the skin can even have reaction to some of those. I see. Like neosporins mm -hmm. of the world. So when people get a cut, I'm like wash it out. Yeah. A little warm water. Yep. That's it. And people sometimes are like, no, what are you talking about? You know, like, no, no, no. Keep it covered, wash it, you're good. I put the, what's the the brown, the Benadine? Is that what it, what's that Iodine? stuff that doctors, yeah, yeah, yeah that they yeah. put on before they open stuff? Yeah, you don't even need to do that. You don't need to do that. I mean, if it's a clean wound, no. I just feel like because of all the prior, you know what I mean? It used to be, we get it, it's like you cut yourself, you're still going to the ramp the next day. It's like MMA fighters getting cauliflower ear. Like, if you hurt your ear, if you get a drain and you don't use it, you won't have it won't get mangled. But they all just go back and rub it and make it worse. So skateboarding is the same. There's so many times my, we've joked about back in the 80s and 90s <laughs> we put we put plastic bags yeah. under the the knee pad. Why? To stop the knee pad from ripping the scab off. Yeah. Oh. Because okay. we'd already or just the the wound was so fresh. Got it. That we felt like and well, the plastic if we leave it bag in this, yeah, if we leave it in this plastic <laughs> containment. <laughs> so stupid. It yeah. also helped the that pad somehow. come back off again. So that you <laughs> oh, and by the time right you're out. done skating, like the, the plastic's ripped. Yeah. The, Scabs it's off. It's definitely been rubbing directly on your knee pad or yeah. whatever. And you're making it so much worse. And we just were in denial of it. Yeah. But you can't stop. But that those are the those are the things that train you to want to put disinfectant on it straight away because so many times you cut yourself and it does start to get infected. I've def millions of times I felt like my body was like, oh, I'm gonna give you staff. And my, because I was <laughs> yeah. youthful, my body was like, nah, you know, because it would rise, get red. And then it, it, maybe I'd take one day off and my leg would be like, oh, thank God. And it would yeah. subside a little bit. But like, I remember like a scab getting deeper and the, and the, uh, the sides rise to the point where there's like a little hole so many times and I'm like I bet you if I didn't put a knee pad on for a couple of days that would never happen but it was almost like if I melted my knee open it was guaranteed to be this tedious thing because I wouldn't stop rubbing the scab off H has safety equipment gotten better uh, 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 enough. not really I mean it's gotten <laughs> it, it's Hot gotten tea. better since the days of plastic Oh, okay. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I mean, we were forgetting. dealing with rector. I mean, think about like the, the original rector pads. The strap was right where you would knee slide, so the strap you'd wear it off. Would wear out, and it was like which is kind of genius. Cut you. No, we, uh, no, no, no. It just wouldn't work you. anymore. Oh. Wouldn't yeah. work anymore. But then, but then when we so then we went. I mean, this is how it evolved. It was like they would have the strap. The strap would would wear out, whatever. So then they made these plastic caps that were longer that yeah, went over yeah. the strap. But then if you hit hard enough, because, stab you in the, because shin. The, yeah. the cap was longer and angled and sharp from sliding, it would go into your shin and give you an open wound on your shin Ow. from knee sliding. Like yeah. it, was, it was the crazy days. So 
then we finally kind of figured Figure it all that. out. Okay. People started wearing knee gaskets as well. That was like in a what's a, a knee gasket? Uh, like, is that sleeve? Oh, okay, a like in the and yeah, a little yeah, yeah. a little velcro like on in top. volleyball. Yeah, yeah, like one eight seven now. They have like a, a, a knee gasket that goes under that has like padding under the knee pad. So it not keeps only your patella in is place, it, yeah, but extra padding. But it also keeps the knee pad more stable on your leg. Because if it's a grippy ramp, that's the, it's very rare. People have better skate parks now, like eighties and nineties. You know, I mean, some dude built it. It's and we didn't. Like the wood, the plywood now, or sorry, it's not even plywood. The surface now is like it's, it's made, made for, for skateboarding. Yeah, it's it's a it used to compound. be. You know, we, the skateboards were made out of what boats are made out of. Like it was just like whatever wood you could get that would bend. Then that's the surface. So, so is it more would, painful to fall these days or back then? Way better now, you know, because it was there was a 50-50 chance depending where you went that a your first knee you. slide, if you didn't check when you did it, your knee pads were just ripped off. Like I did, or the, there'd be nails sticking out, that's ready I, to yeah. grab it, and then pull it off. Yeah. I did the Guinness Book of World Records. Like I was, somebody got it's a better skateboarder than me, Danny Way, and they asked him to do it, and he was like, "How much?" And they said, 10 grand." He's like, "Yeah, right." And they're like, "Do you know anybody that would do it for ten grand?" He's like, "Totally." <laughs> so they called me, and I was like, "Yeah, I'll I'll break this record that can be broken by my friend anytime." <laughs> So, but they made a, re a big quarter pipe for me for me to jump off some scaffolding into the quarter pipe yeah, and I break his record. That. that was in 2001, right? <sighs> wow. Okay. And Weird. It, you lost you're, the only only you're the you only. You lost it in 2006. Did I? Yeah. Oh, man. I think by that same guy that you just mentioned. Yeah, no, because it's always been his. I uh, never, okay. it's never <laughs> yeah. it wasn't real. It wasn't real. It was, and yeah, I, Danny passed it down to him yeah. and, and then, then took it back. And then took it back yeah. when okay. he had the budget to jump yeah, off the when guitar. Yeah, when the fight was worth his while. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's it. Yeah, they paid exactly. him like a hundred grand. I feel like, that. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. his record. Yeah, so it's all Danny. Thank you, Danny. Like, I'm not trying to claim it, but uh, the first time I jumped off the scaffolding into the ramp, I went to knee slide and this is like a brand new ramp. They made a brand new surface and it was sticky. And I drop like 15 feet into like a 30 foot quarter pipe. And then my knee pads Ugh. go, Rit! and I was like, boom, and just, and just got destroyed. And I remember thinking, oh, this, this is going to be a fun day because I can't fall and I'm going to fall hundreds of times before I make this. So, yeah, this will be cool. And then the stunt guy that had uh, padding for me if I make it. Because there was nowhere to go, it was like in a warehouse. So you have to run into a pad. So, he, so he put a gymnast. Speed. He put gymnast yeah. pads like dominoes, like up. So I just hit them like walls, like one by one, just to slow you down. Yeah, but the down. first one I hit it, and it bounced me in the air over the second one. I just landed on the concrete. I was like, okay, maybe a different idea, stunt coordinator. <laughs> We're, oh my god! Yeah, everything we're doing is very experimental, especially yeah. back then with the ramps. As the ramps got bigger and yeah. whatnot. Yeah, yeah, we were, nobody was used to doing 50 mile an hour on a skateboard. Like, it's a little bit different. Jason, first impressions matter. Yeah? Yeah, What's I'm like What's the first that. thing that someone notices about you? In most cases, it's your face, and more importantly, your skin. Clinically proven to reduce wrinkles, fine lines, and signs of aging, Caldera Lab is the leader in men's skincare and is here to save the day. Use our exclusive code, Hawk. Wolf. Good code. I like it. That's right. At calderalab.com to enjoy 20% off their best products. Caldera Lab creates high-performance men's skincare products, and the regimen leads off their product lineup, a twice-a-day routine to transform your skin. Luckily, men's skincare has never been easier with Caldera Lab and the regimen. Inside the bundle, you'll find your skincare dream team. The clean slate, the base layer, and the good. Caldera Lab is made with top tier ingredients and is a great addition to your daily routine. Takes less than a minute, morning and night, and here to reduce your wrinkles, fine lines, and signs of aging. It's really easy. It's not that difficult to do. I do it all the time, and I look great. I'm 50, and nobody thinks I'm 50. Caldera Labs. That's what it is. That's my secret. There you go. Now you know. Get 20% off with our code Hawk Hawk Wolf. Wolf at calderalab.com. That's 20% off at caldera.com by using the code HawkWolf. That's 20% off at calderalab.com by using the code Hawk Hawk Wolf. Wolf. Jump into skin and first impression royalty with Caldera Lab. What is your view of the, I don't know, the um, the effects, the long-term effects of of these impacts mostly on the knees not not everything like we we know about the other everything else but mostly because the knees we rely on just to 
go fall safely. Yeah, I think the knee issue that would concern me more as a doctor is less so about when you slide, but more so when there's a direct high impact. Yeah, well, to, we do that we, damages we, the cartilage. We, our technique is we take one step to lessen the impact, mm. and then we go to our and knees. To but knees. but for sure, I mean that's you know dozens of times a day. If I mean, I gotta imagine that you have a higher risk of developing osteoarthritis, which is like an overuse arthritis. I got that. Yeah. Yeah. So well, that makes go. sense. So is there anything? You can, is there anything you can, you can do to help me? Yeah, knee replacement. Yeah, but you can only get one, right? Why? I got a cadaver. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then when I went to Columbia to get stem cells, they said that I had like one ligament left. Okay. And they were like, "You," and I was like, "So just give me a knee replacement." And they're like, "Well, if you, we give you a knee replacement and then you need another one when you're older, we can't do that." No, you. You can. only get one. No, you can. Wait, so you just keep getting them? Yeah. What the? I just want to just give but me it's not about ligaments. It, it's more about the joint space. Like, is there bone on bone erosion now? Yeah, that's what no the knee replacement is for. Yeah, yeah, and you can't. Do they replace meniscus? They do, right? Well, because if you replace the whole joint, the meniscus gets replaced anyway. You get a titanium or whatever metal yeah. that they use. These Wait, days. so if I get new knees and then I blow out that knee, mm -hmm. I can just get my legs cut off and then put another one in? <laughs> yeah, you know that's what they I do. I mean, they right? last. They last. They I think cut like your fucking years. leg off, dude. I already, I did that to myself, so <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, I'm in. I was there, that's, that's crazy. <laughs> so there's, I can get more. Well, yeah, they say, like, I remember I was uh, telling one of my patients that let's try and buy you, because they were elderly. I was yeah. saying, let's buy you some time to get you a little older so that you don't have to go through surgery again in your 80s. Oh, so that's what they to, were warning me. Yeah, so like we would, you know, give them some steroid injections every six months to cool down the inflammation. And then once they were 70, we said, okay, let's do the last time. I don't think I have to worry about 80, the way I'm going. <laughs> I yeah. just need one more, two brand new knees. And now is the time. Like, I need them now. Mm. I was just telling Tony, I hurt myself in Utah. Something pinched. And I was like, oh, that's funny. And now when I'm walking, something pinches and I can't. Because usually, because I've torn so many ligaments and had so many surgeries that I'm a little bit of a knee doctor myself. Like, I'm like, ah. Oh, I can feel it. I'm like, ah, oh, I tore my MCL again, you know? And I'm usually right. But when it's like, uh, I can't, I don't know wh which movement, it just pinches sometimes when yeah. I'm walking. I'm like. That feels meniscus. Yeah, that's yeah. what, see, I'm pretty much a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> We're pretty much the same. Like when it comes to knees, you could talk to him or me and you would get the same answers. It's just if I open you up and I replace it, you're probably up shit creek. I that's... learned the hard way about meniscus. I was in, I was in Japan skating with like Bones Brigade days. Yeah. And did a 720 on a kind of a smaller ramp, landed way too, like I should have stood up, but I decided to squat. So that means my drop was way further. Yeah. And I felt something pop in my knee and I was like, nah, whatever. I was in my twenties, just like, nah, it's fine. <laughs> and then went to a uh, department store that night and I was bending down to look at some headphones and, and my caught. knee just, no, it just stuck. Yeah. Right. So. What I learned later is the meniscus went under, like it was torn. The torn part went under the patella. And then I was stuck bent there by myself in Tokyo in a department store, like stuck as a squatting. You couldn't fuck. stand up. Couldn't stand up. I crawled to a um, stairwell, just laying there like, what, what the fuck do I do? Yeah. And then I started like wildly kicking my leg. I don't know what to do. Just yeah. trying to, and, and it to released. To get that thing, yeah, because I, I had the same thing with my ankle. I had a bone spur that would get stuck in there, and I had to keep flicking my ankle, yeah. and then all of a sudden I could stand on it, and I never really knew the answer. But I but I didn't go to the hospital there. I didn't know what right. to do, right? You so, just had to make sure you yeah, didn't Yeah, and we didn't have any more, no, we didn't have any more skate demos. So okay. we, I think we were flying home the next day or the day after, and when I flew home, I went to the doctor and got all the info, info about it. And, all right. But Did I you end up getting surgery for it? Yeah, but it was it was um, it was like 1990 ish. Mm. You know, it was. I mean, that was they, back they, when if you got a knee surgery, you had the giant scar down the front of your knee to prove it. Yeah, well, no, it was arthroscopic. Right, so you had the little holes. Yeah, so I got lucky that I was in that era. Yeah. Well, because these days, like we've done research to show that for most people, I mean, not professional athletes, if you have a mild meniscus injury doing six months of physical therapy versus undergoing surgery and then physical therapy, the results are pretty much the same. Really? Yeah. But, but it, I mean, you can't escape the actual 
material that's getting stuck. You know what I mean? Sure. If it's like, locking, that's, a, yeah. that's, I wouldn't call that a mile. At some point, at some point I, I actually went, I remember that Hawaii mini ramp contest they had where guns yeah. jumped the gap. Schroeder and all that. Yeah. So I went to that before having surgery thinking that I would just avoid squatting because it only happened when I squat yeah. and I did, uh, sorry, we're getting in the weeds here. No, but, I love um, this. I did like a, you know, Del Mar Indy over the hip where I, you, you like do like kind of a Japan move and in the middle of it, it, it got stuck. It got stuck. In the air. In the air. So I landed. Still in the ball. In, but in the ball, yeah. And then that, that moment, it never released again. Mm. But it was it was it was torn enough that I could actually function with it. So I never I could never straighten my knee, but I could get it to here. So I did enter that contest. I sucked. Like I I don't remember. I didn't make the finals. Or whatever. Right. But um, and that that was like the turning point where I was like, okay, I gotta have surgery. This sucks. So I got a question for you. You boxed, right? Yep. And you're a doctor. Yeah. Are you like a dumb doctor? Because <laughs> yeah, you know you know. <laughs> Like when you get punched in the face, it's not good for your brain, right? It's really bad for your brain. And then you use your brain to be a good doctor. Yeah. And then you have like a podcast and YouTube. You got to stay yeah. witty and sharp and stuff. And then you trained. I assume you sparred for several weeks. I mean, months. Yeah. Months. That was my second fight too. So you take. You've been punched in the face for a couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. Why? That's a good question. Um, Probably because I fell in love with the sport yeah, and I knew the risks. So I was okay with the risks yeah. and made myself comfortable with that. It actually goes back to when I was in med school. I unfortunately lost my mom to cancer while I was becoming a doctor. Uh, and sorry. I will, thank you. But I wasn't doing anything. I, I wasn't taking care of my physical health. Uh, me and my father were really upset. It was dark times for us. And I said, you know what? I got to do something, get outside my comfort zone. And I signed up for like a Groupon boxing class. Mm. And that was 10 years ago. So I did that. And that same trainer was my trainer for 10 years for casual training. And then all these YouTubers started boxing, the Jake Pauls, the Logan Pauls of the world. And I said, you know what? Like, let me I put this to the that. chance and, yeah. and uh, do something nice. I donated all my fighter pay to um, charities and it's always for a good cause. I feel like uh, a lot of good comes from it. So it seems like fighting kind of helped you deal with the pain of losing someone you care about? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I can relate to that. Yeah. I feel like fighting is like a metaphor for life. Like if you go through, because you're probably pretty nervous, right? Big time. I mean, it forces you to be in the present. Right? Yeah. yeah. And now would you fight again or do you think you're done? Yeah, actually, um, on the upcoming Nate Diaz, Jake Paul undercard, they offered me a rematch with the same fella I lost to. But they told me with six weeks to go and that wasn't enough time to get ready. So I'll be on the next one. So you are going to keep fighting? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can't retire 0-1 as a pro fighter. My first fight was an exhibition, so. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, that's, that's a loaded statement for Jason. Yeah, uh, look, I... Do you I, have any tips? I mean, I don't know. Yeah, don't fight. Yeah, don't fight. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, I... I you're lucky know. you're catching him now, because if you'd had this conversation a year ago, he'd been like, yeah, keep on fighting. No, nah, yeah, well, okay, I thought about the glory. I thought about, um, I didn't think about my future. That's like a, a, that if you think about your future in a fight, you're, that's like a, a that's not a, like I can get in on that. Like you've got a weakness. Yeah. Like if I don't care what happens to me when I fight you, I'm harder to beat. You know, because I like go on, do it versus please don't hit. Please don't get caught. Like, because I've had a lot of fights. If there's there's an attitude that is a winning attitude. So, but when you step back and look at it afterwards and it, it's all said and done, like I didn't, you know, I always didn't really think I would live that long. And now I'm like, if I'm older and I'm talking to my kids and I don't know who they are or what they did yeah. because I won some fucking fight on, I don't care what time. What organization? So are you saying right now, if you could go back, you'd, you'd not do it? No, but I'm not a doctor. I'm a dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> you can't punch anything out. There's nothing in there. <laughs> like, what is my career? Later on, later on I'm going to, like, do open heart. No, I'm not. I'm not going to do yeah. anything. Like I have a question, though. I, you're in a unique position as, a, as an athlete and a doctor. 
do you immediately diagnose an in, your injury? Oh, your totally. Injury? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's where the advantage lies, and not so much in the middle of a fight, obviously, yeah, yeah. but when you're training, knowing the difference between when a pain is like an ache and you could push yeah. through, yeah. or like, oh, this is a problem, you can't train more. Yeah. And I'm, I'm sure you guys have yeah. so much experience with For that. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, we're definitely... The only difference is, is I feel like, depending because there's situations where i've cared about something more than the pain and i'm like i know that i've torn my shoulder and that i should probably bow out but it's almost time to fight and i know that adrenaline can make me use that arm like it's not torn okay and then i'll deal with the consequences of that after and that's I don't know. That's when the attitude, like, is it that at with that attitude, you're a winning fighter. Mm -hmm. But also after the fight, you probably did a lot of damage to that because you wouldn't let it heal. Yeah. But that's when you get, you know, dude, when you get wrapped up in it, like, of there's course. no, you can't turn it off. No. Like, I just, Absolutely I made the commitment not. to fighting somebody, and 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 I always assume worst case scenario, I get knocked unconscious and wake up with like a broken face. Like, I, if you don't think through those things, like, you're dreaming. Like, yeah. you got to realize those things are going to happen. And I'm like, well, if that happens, that happens. Yeah. I ain't scared of it. But that takes a lot. But how have the after effects of your fighting affected your job at all? No. Nah, you can tell. No. He's still got a straight nose. He hasn't been yeah. hit that Well, much. no, but I'm just, <laughs> I mean, temporarily, like. No, 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 not I'm a little foggy. I probably shouldn't come in for a surgery today. No, not at all. Um, I, it's not even. Like I, I'm, I'm not doing this for the next ten years, you know. Uh, it is different, yeah. and he's and he's working with professionals. Like yeah. I, it's different if you're like if you come up, it's like coming up. You come up in skateboarding, you're gonna ride some crappy ramp with a bunch of yeah. people that don't have any good pointers. You start in in fighting, you go in comedy, you're in some crappy place, and everybody sucks, and you get three minutes. Like those are the streets. Like tattoos, you start tattooing, and you don't know anybody. Your first five or six tattoos suck. But if you're famous, then you know people or you got money and you've never been tattooed and you're like, I need to get one from, you know what I mean, so-and-so. And your first tattoo is going to be sick. Like Joe Rogan's tattoos are sick because he's a freaking millionaire and he's not he didn't grow up in the crap. Same with fighting. Like you get people that know that you're new and you're going to fight in a, in a, at a level that you're not used to. The people that spy you are good and good guys give you work, not brain damage. Yes. But when you're coming up, and you're sparring like Jimmy, you know, I mean, who works at Subway. Jimmy's gonna take your fucking head off. He doesn't care, <laughs> and you're gonna take his head off. Yeah. And then if you do that for like seven years before you go, go pro, that is a ton yeah. of brain damage. Agreed. Yeah. So but, I'm not doing that. Right. And I don't recommend I, that. Because I did a little bit at the start where it was like everybody just gave everybody a concussion, like a bit of a hard knocks thing. And now that I know more and train with people that are high level, I could never go back to that because I know that it's like. You may as well turn the camera on because we're having a real fight. Yeah. But if you fight a pro, they teach you. Like, hey, man, move. like I could catch you right there and not crack your brains into the back of your head. Like, yeah, so I feel like where you're at, you can still get really good. And then you have that one fight where, you, yeah, okay, if you get a concussion in that, what's, what's what, 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 how many more fights do you think you're going to have? Uh, one or two, that's it. Right, so you, that's worst case scenario, you get three more concussions for the rest of your life. You're fine. Yeah. <laughs> You guys have me beat, probably. Yeah, we don't want to talk about that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we don't need to bring okay. that up. But we can talk about broken bones and ligaments <laughs> and stuff. What would you say your your ultimate expertise is in medicine? Uh, medicine, yeah. Uh, I think it's my ability to communicate with patients about mm. what's going on. Mm. And I think a lot of doctors these days, especially ones in media, like to take the position of I know all. Right. Or we have all the answers. Mm. And that is not reality. There is so much more we don't know than we actually have knowledge on. Yeah. And when we make a diagnosis or we recommend a treatment, that's scientific, but there's so much art involved in that. And that's not art just deciding whether or not this is right for you, but also explaining it to you, figuring out if it's right for your lifestyle. And I think that's where my skill set lies. Hmm. That you can sort of tailor it. Tailor it and not like overpromise BS. Right. Like, I don't sell any supplements on my social media. I don't have any miracle potions or life hacks that are going to change everything for your health. It just doesn't exist. You're so. saying they don't work. They're not proven. And if they're not proven, I'm not going to waste people's time. Like, and money. Yeah, and money especially. People have limited budgets. Yeah. No, there's more of that now than ever. Yes, because of social media. Yeah. So what about steroids? Media. They that, work. That too. 
that has been now put into the limelight on social media where it's like acceptable and celebrated that if you're 30 and you're on TRT and you don't have low T, why are you taking it? That's, that's not healthy. That's crazy. Because I'm on testosterone replacement, but that's because I got my levels checked and they were like crazy low. Well, that's different. And I was, wasn't 30. I was like 48 or something. But this is happening to a lot of people where they go to see a doctor. The doctor checks their levels and they might be fine. Yeah. But the doctor says, are you feeling a little tired? Wow. Who the hell is not feeling a little tired? <laughs> yeah. So they pitch them this thing and maybe improves their sex life somewhat. Is that a little unhealthy? Like to have it's very unhealthy. To have extra high testosterone. Not just like extra high. If you don't need it, your body will stop making yours. Right. Uh, if you're young, it affects your fertility, potentially permanently, increases rates of heart disease and stroke, increases risks of prostate cancer, enlarges your prostate even if you don't get cancer so you can't pee normally, lose your hair. Like there's a lot of problems that happen unnecessarily. At least those risks aren't properly discussed. Like boxing is not healthy for you, right? Yeah. But well, I is. know the risks. Yeah. Those patients that are taking that a lot of times don't know the risks. Yeah, because it doesn't seem like the doctor wants to tell them the potential side because effects. Because the doctor wants them to keep coming back for the prescriptions. It's, yeah, right. uh, it's a good business. What about peptides? What about peptides? Are they good or bad or useless? Uh, I am not an expert on peptides, right. but I will say, like, I've heard some mentioned on podcasts that are, like, banned by agencies across the world that uh, do not allow them into sport or the FDA. And people are like, oh, no, but I take them for better sleep. And I'm what? like, but why are you doing that? Yeah. I, I feel like there's a lot of easier wins to be had with our health that are definitely going to improve your health. And they're not sexy things to talk about, like, like what? getting enough sleep. Yeah. Like, you know, things that require actual work. But the miracle bullet just, it doesn't exist. All right. It doesn't pan out. So, getting what sleep, you, you think, is one of the most. Important. I think it's one of the things that we discount the most. All right. That we're like, ah, oh, I can push. And what is the this. optimal sleep? Um, for your age, it would be seven to nine hours of sleep. Nine? Yeah, yeah seven good luck to with nine. that. Who did that? <laughs> yeah. It's important. I can't tell you how important it is. What about drugs to sleep nine hours? Is that bad? It's not ideal. Right. Yeah. Like Michael Especially Jackson drug or something that wouldn't. Well, work. no, that's very aggressive. That's very that's aggressive. Even worse, yeah. Uh, I think he was on propofol when that happened. I, think. I don't know any of that. I just want to go but to that sleep. That was like a sedating. What about thing. hyperbaric chamber sleeping in that? Would that be a good idea? For what? Because I don't want um, to to be healthy. Um, I don't think it's necessary. Good, because yeah. it's expensive and lonely. <laughs> I did that on my first. After my first surgery, you slept in it. Oh, that's a no, no, no. Fact. I just went in them. Oh, okay. Um, I went in them like a couple times a week yeah. for ninety minutes at a time. There's some evidence for healing, but yeah. if you're yeah. just saying for sleep, like yeah, that, I wouldn't do that for that. Okay, yeah. but I was already doomed because my bone was already disconnected. So. Right, but if it had been connected, it would have helped. Perhaps. He man, he does not. He's he did not when he got the bone, the leg reset. He didn't go Is back. Is that the in femur the, that you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I had a non-union. After uh, eight months, and um, he was skating on it. Yeah, but it, but as I skated and all that impact, it, it kept driving it further away. So if you look at my X-rays, it's like it was it was here, it was <laughs> and here, it and then it was here, and then it was here. And my last X-ray was like that. Damn. And you know the femur is stronger than steel and concrete. So imp what? impressive. Didn't feel like did it at that. the time. Yeah. Man, you broke through steel and concrete. Cool. <laughs> Sorry. Lucky me. <laughs> Just trying to make it sound <laughs> tough. <laughs> Let's talk about hair. All right. Well, you don't have to choose between hair growth and your health. There's a holistic solution for men that promotes both healthier hair and whole body wellness. Get ahead of your thinning hair with Nutrafol's whole body approach to hair growth. No drugs, no compromises. Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement clinically shown to improve your hair growth, thickness, and visible scalp coverage. Nutrafol's hair growth nutraceuticals go beyond genetics to multi-target the root cause of thinning, including stress, hormones, Nutrition, metabolism, aging, and lifestyle through whole body health. Physician formulated using natural medical grade ingredients, Nutrafol's drug-free patented technology provides consistent, reliable results without compromising your sexual health. In a clinical study, men showed progressive improvement to hair growth and thickness after three to six months. 
Nutrafol is also trusted and recommended by more than 3,000 top doctors. You can grow thicker, healthier hair and support our show by going to Nutrafol.com and entering the promo code HAWKWOLF. Yeah, that's us. That's right. What? To save $10 off your first month subscription. This offer is only available to U.S. customers for a limited time. Plus, free shipping on every order. Get $10 off at Nutrafol.com, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L dot com. Promo code HAWKWOLF. Even if you're not going bold, just get it. You broke anything? Um, I tried snowboarding when yeah. I was younger, and I broke a wrist. But my father was a doctor, and I, when I came home from the trip like three days later, he's like, are you nuts? You didn't get care for this? This is definitely broken. I'm like, oh, shit. I didn't know. Did you keep riding? Yeah, uh, I switched to skiing because it felt safer. Because I was a rollerblader. poles. I was a rollerblader, so I felt safer being on two. I get that, but I mean, but you had to hold, to hold the pole. How did I, you I hold it with hold the broken wrist? Oh, you, what? I, I didn't hold poles. Oh, you didn't use poles. Yeah. Okay, got it. I don't even like. I'm not a big skier myself, so I don't. Why would do you need poles? Because I definitely um, did. I think it's more. Sometimes it's just sort of a, a baseline of a, like, okay, my turn is this is the center, got it, but got it. but it's it's just to get you around. Okay. I mean, isn't that? I don't know. I don't ski, but I I did when I was younger, and I mm -hmm. feel like it's just more to get you through the flats. That makes sense. To get you, yeah. you skied. Yeah, when I was a kid. Yeah, Me over too. snowboarding. No, huh? it wasn't. It didn't then there exist was no yet. snowboarding. Do you know how old I'm we are, dude? Old, yeah, wow. I'm super old. Yeah, we were before snowboarding. snowboarding. Yeah, I yeah, was. I, the first I got. Wow. I I won a snowboard in 1981 at a Dang. skate event, and you couldn't use it on the mountains. Yeah, that was the other thing. So, like the, in Australia, the, there was only one allowed. mountain you were allowed to wow. snowboard. It wasn't allowed. So yeah. my dad drove me to Baldy, and we rode on the side. I still have photos of it. We rode on the side of the road, just in, like made a jump and. Yeah. Tried to learn how to turn, but it was it was you know it was like a piece of wood with bungee straps. Yeah, it sucked. Yeah, it was crazy fun, that they kept going when that was the first board. Like I like <laughs> if, if it was like, hey man, like skateboarding on the snow, get it? And then I use that board. I'd be like, maybe we should just yeah. Skate. But there were, there were a few guys that there were a few people that could make it work. Like Burton, and that was enough. Tom Sims, yeah, but they, that was enough where it was like, oh look, it you can carve, you okay. can do these things. Yeah. Little errors and stuff, and then yeah. they started developing. I'm not a historian, but I lived through those yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I was there for a little bit. <laughs> I remember the first day of snowboarding where I was just on my ass all day, and I remember like I was a skateboarder, and uh, everyone yeah. else was skiing, and they're like, "You're gonna regret it." I'm like, "You're gonna regret it." <laughs> yeah. And then for the whole day, I was just, you know, I mean, I figured I'd be like a skateboard, and I'd be like busting airs in a few minutes. And all I was doing was just eating yeah, shit. Yeah, the first day is, the, that's what I tell everyone. Like, first day, it sucks, no matter yeah. what. Yeah. Second day, you start to get it. That's. I remember having this conversation with Jeff Phillips at the time. Yeah. He and I started snowboarding, to, like, truly getting into, not not the bungee straps when they finally had bindings. And yeah. There were a couple mountains letting you in. And uh, I was talking to him. I was like, I was like, oh, we're going to go snowboarding for the first time. He's like, okay, let me just tell you, the first day is terrible. Second day is pretty good. By the third day, I was better than the instructor. Yeah. Wow. And yeah, that's because pretty much how it went for me too. Yeah, because once you figure out how to turn that thing, we now you're got skating the again. tricks. You know the errors yeah. and stuff. Yeah. But but that's interesting that you said you were your rollerblader, but you went to snowboarding. I thought it was cooler. Yeah. So I was yeah, like, oh, is. I'm going to try that. Yeah. And I didn't wear the wrist guards. Learned my lesson. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how we ever wore wrist guards. <laughs> Dude, I used to wear wrist guards, and like, how did you grab your board? I, I still I couldn't. Stop does it? I couldn't do it. I remember, does it too. I'll never forget. I used to do tail grab to fakies, and I broke my wrist, so I had a wrist guard on, and I was in a demo, and I went to grab my tail, and the tail just bonked the into the, the plastic, the little plastic yeah. thing on my palm, and it bonked my board away from me, and I just had my tip, my fingertips on it, and I was like, it'll be all right, and like just sort of like tried to snap it back in with fingertips and my front wheels locked up. And it was like a like a head high air to fake, you know. Tommy Guerrero was there. <laughs> and it was just like a whoa. Like, I, like I'm on the flat, like laid out looking up and he's like, dude, are you okay? And I was like, I think so. And I was like, yeah, fucking wrist, wrist guard. Yeah. Like that's it. <laughs> never, so hard to... I blame the wrist guard. I never wore it again. I, I told like... myself back, and this is something maybe you could speak to, but I told myself back then when I finally gave up wrist guards, 
I just said, if I'm going to break my wrist, it's if I'm wearing a wrist guard, this is going to break my wrist further up anyway. That's not true, but I remember hearing that. <laughs> but I, yeah. I, I made myself believe yeah. that. Nice. And justified giving up wrist guards. For I went that. to the I went to the tape, and then I went and then I got leather uh, leather wristbands made that had more than one buckle on it because uh, doing research, when I get one with one buckle, the sweat would make the leather loosen up. So I would get like three on them. So that every time it loosened up, I'd crank it even tighter. And it looked like, because James Hetfield used to wear <laughs> uh, like black sweatbands on his wrists. Uh -huh. So I had black leather sweatbands on my wrist. So I looked like James Hetfield, but s skateboard leather version. I didn't realize the leather bit was like maybe my gay starter kit. I just realized it was like a little leather daddy action going. Did you, did they protect you? I mean, a li yeah, I really, yeah, I'm. I would put it on real time. I still to this day when I skate now because I've, I've broken them, like this one I shattered, and broke all my bones in my hand, and I had all these pins. You would have hated me. I broke it really bad in Rhode Island, and uh, they were trying to yank on it at one point. They had the little socks on, and then the lady, the nurse came in and said, "Stop pulling on it! I got the X-rays." It's not dislocated. And, and I, I was already on morphine. So I was like, yeah, you idiot. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> get, yeah. get off me. Like, I didn't know what was happening. But then I had to go to Santa Barbara to see a hand specialist, like a hand surgeon. And he put all these pins in it and all this stuff. I had, like, scars on it. But I had a cast up to here. And this is – I just – the bug, I, the skateboarding, I couldn't stop. So, like, as soon as I yeah, got we, back – we're addicted. There was a contest, and I'm like, oh, I can't not go in the contest. So I cut the cast off to my elbow so that I could move my arm. And then in that contest, I slammed on a 540, and my hand hit the, gra like, like hit the ground hard. And I remember going, oh, that could be bad. And I went, I was like, nah, fingers are working. <laughs> She's good. And I didn't think anything about it. And then like maybe two days later, I was asleep in my, in my house. And I used to, before I shattered, broke all my shoulders because I, I can't, I used to sleep on my stomach and I'd put my hands under my pillow, but now I can't because my shoulders will slip out. So, but back then I had my hands under the pillow and I woke up like, what the, what is that? What does that smell? And then I'm like, oh my uh. God, it's my hand. And I lived in Hollywood and I remember getting my girlfriend up. I'm like, I got to go to Santa Barbara. Something's up. And then I started driving to Santa Barbara. It's a long drive. Gangrene? What's that? Gangrene? No, I, I get there and I come in because it's starting to hurt. Like on the drive, it started to really hurt. So by the time I got there, I was like, I'm in, I, I need to see the doctor. I'm in a lot of pain. Something's wrong. And he, he, I, they rushed me in there and he comes in pissed because I, I forgot. My cast is cut in half. <laughs> and he's like, what the? F why are you? And then he came in and he. Uh, got that that grinder thing, yeah. and he cut me open with it, and I think he did it on purpose because he was sloppy with it. I, Wait, no, he doesn't cut skin. The it, it's what's an that? oscillating. What's that? <laughs> it, from the your skin ear, injury when he did the ear and cut the fiberglass so it off. It doesn't cut. It fucking cut me. Really? He cut me twice. Hmm. Maybe then, it was an older device. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I'm old, so it was a long time ago. <laughs> but what had happened is I hit. And one of the pins came out and it pushed the meat out. And because I was walking around using it, it made the meat come out and start to rot outside of my arm in the cast. I mean, it's just a bacterial infection. It just was, for sure. just, it was, just, it was like a pin and a little blubber of, of meat coming <laughs> out of the hole. And he just grabbed the pliers and went, Rit! and I was like, ah, what are you doing? And he's like, do you know how many golf players come in here? And I was like, no, what is that question? <laughs> yeah. He was like, none. You idiot. And I was like, whoa, idiot. Because he was like offended that skateboarders, that I would break it and then I would go back to breaking it. I mean, using it again. But he said, you're going to regret that. It doesn't work. And I was like, shut up. But look, it doesn't work. He was right. <laughs> <laughs> Can't what is that? Sense. Isn't there some warning that if it smells like almonds, is that what it is? I haven't heard almonds. Mine smelled like rotting mustard meat. Mustard or something like that? Yeah, like, rotting meat is like a, a dangerous sign for gangrene. Right. Okay. Yeah, it smelled real bad. Yeah. But that can, right. Because that can seed into your blood and then become systemic where you develop septic shock. Right. And that's really dangerous. Wow. Yeah. So I'm glad that it was a didn't close happen. one. Yeah. 
See, I knew though. I drove up. <laughs> What's been one of your most challenging cases? Challenging cases. Um, or where you had to sort of re redirect your thinking to pull um, the plan. I frequently see a lot of patients that come in for pain, but upon doing a thorough history, physical, maybe even some imaging, we figure out it's a mental health thing that's driving the pain. And initially, there's a lot of pushback from people, patients themselves, saying, hey, you're saying this, no, this is, is all is in a, my yeah, head. this is a real... And I'm like, no, 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 this is a real thing. You're really feeling this. But the cause just happens to be not physical. It's a mental health right. cause. And we will address it, you know, talking about their childhood traumas, which we call adverse childhood experiences. And we get rid of their pain. How? And they're like, what? But yeah. How do you get rid of it? By addressing the childhood trauma. Oh, so like therapy and stuff. Correct. And the physical pain goes, goes away. away. Yeah. Man, you got to be nice to your kids. Holy shit. Yeah. You can feel pain, physical pain oh, yeah. Yeah. from the mental abuse of your child. And when we say abuse of a child, a lot of people think it has to be physical or sexual. Emotional neglect is yep. also abuse. So like not having support from your family members is a form of abuse that actually will show up with physical symptoms later on. It also can be a form of power. Like being uh, neglected, because being neglected is like, well, I'll show you. You know what I mean? Sure. I'll no. Well, I'll shine like a diamond. A lot of people's <laughs> superpower comes from their pain. So that's, like their biggest that's mine. Is such a Gen weakness. X thing, though. Is it? <laughs> that, Wait, did you just call me a boomer? <laughs> no, we're Generation X. Uh, is that after boomer? Yes. Okay, good. Wait, I am a Generation X. Yes. Okay, Miles called me a boomer the other day. Yeah, because people his age can't differentiate right what an idiot what's he <laughs> is he a millennial uh, he's a millennial 84 yeah. and on is millennial right yeah so. yeah but that, i mean just the gen x thing of, of being left alone oh and yeah, yeah having to prove yourself i thought it was a cool without, thing without accolades that's definitely a not, whatever i'm right. generalizing but yeah i've i've met enough people and talked to people my age where it's like that is definitely a thing we were just left our own devices yeah like I go mean, home I've, they, I saw, I saw a thing recently. This, this woman said, "Do you know, for our generation, <laughs> after news programs would end like at 10 p.m., they're like, it's 10 p.m. Do you know where your children are? Mm -hmm. Like, the news had to remind you that you had yeah. kids. Yeah, at 10. At yeah. 10 p.m. Probably a bit late. Oh yeah, they might be gone. And you know what? They probably didn't. Yeah, <laughs> know where they were. Yeah, <laughs> but I it digress. gives you time to so. like come up with some cool stuff. You know, when you're by yourself. I mean." It's all a balance, right? So like you I have just to give like kids phones, independence. Because I, I have kids and I can tell they're very busy. They have like mm -hmm. a, 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 a busy social calendar. Yeah, like they're always doing stuff, going somewhere. Mm -hmm. And if they're not doing that, this thing's entertaining them. Yeah. When, when I think about like where there was times where you just have to wait, you just have to stay there and there's nothing to look at, your brain starts to make up stuff. Mm -hmm. And you can, maybe sometimes bad and useless, but sometimes – Good and, and very useful. Yeah. Have you noticed any, I don't know, ailments or, or issues with people just staring at phones? Oh, absolutely. Not just like the typical text neck thing or text, text neck. neck. Yeah. That's, you know, that's the ultimate diss Dude, ever. Yeah. Easy text neck. Yeah. I feel like I'd be um, born with text neck. Vision changes from keeping the phone too close, oh. needing glasses earlier. Absolutely. How do you fix text neck? Stop staring at your phone like this. There's no, you don't do like a rehab thing. Oh, no, you do some physical therapy. For and, it and, and it can stuff. be fixed. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. The body's very resilient. Like, yeah. I mean, you guys know. But uh, also, we see ramifications from the mental health side, where like the rates of mental health issues, especially in teenage girls over the last 20 years, have skyrocketed. And it's not just because it's become safer to talk about mental health issues, because it's also been documented with ER visits with true self-harm. That's not like a destigmatized issue. That's happening. This is a real thing that's happening. And social media is definitely part of this situation. And why I think teen girls worse than guys, because guys pick on each other physically. I'm generalizing here, but that's uh, the pattern that we see evolve. With women, it's very commonly body image, 
judging one another, and social media is really primed for that. Right, because social media is where you pretend to be something you're not, and then if you're just watching social media, I've always said that, there's the famous women of the world, that's not what they really are, are like, that's not what they really look like, that's not what they really do, it's just the best possible side that's that they show on you, media, so yeah. when, you be, when you're just like, you know, Sally's looking at it, you're like, man, she's got everything, and she's a, I don't have anything, like, they don't realize that. Even Kim Kardashian has bad days and oh, looks like a turd in the morning sometimes, you know? Yeah. <laughs> what? She probably does. I, I mean, I, I, spend, I assume I, your comment was meant to be funny, so I laughed. That I, was, I bet that you was she, the appropriate response from me, Jason. I bet you sometimes she wipes, she gets poo on her finger. That's nasty, <laughs> you know? She's I nasty. I had never thought of that. She's not thank showing you. that on Instagram, you but for, you know what's thank happened. Thank you for giving me that visual. And you know she's looked back to see what kind of dookie she dropped. <laughs> <laughs> which is, which makes it? her nasty as fuck. But but she ain't posting that. Sally's like, is Man. anyone posting that? Nah, because Instagram <laughs> is like mean about that. But people need to know that we all do it. Like you're a doctor, you're a yeah. respectable guy. Yeah. You've looked at your poo, right? Yeah, you're supposed to. He looked That's at medical yours. advice, right? To yeah. to check if you're healthy. And you so. have you're a surgeon, right? Well, no, I'm a primary care doctor. Oh, you don't actually open people up. I mean, minor stuff in the office. Right, but you got a steady hand, do right? You stand, do you uh, stand in surgeries? Uh, for like my training you... in residency, uh -huh. yeah, absolutely. But now, no, now it's maybe skin procedures, abscesses. Um, ingrown toenail or something. Oh, okay. Oh, I love those. Do you get to cut all the way down? That's mm -hmm. sick. And I... very bloody. Very, yeah, I've always wanted bloody. to do that. You've always wanted to treat one? Yeah. Because I've had it, and I don't want we that again. Dreams. But, man, I would love to cut your toe <laughs> hey, in half. collab. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. I'll bring you into Nama the guy and have Resident, you in it. Let's go. Yeah, motherfucker. <laughs> so it good. It is satisfying. Right, right as he's about to, he's like, I'm going to bring in my friend. <laughs> yeah. And I just come in with scissors And then scissors he comes in stung. looking like this with no scrubs. <laughs> I got you. Yeah. I'd be so pumped. I would love to I pull see a like toenail a, off. That could be like a reality that'd be show. That'd a good video, yeah. <laughs> a reality show? Yeah. Yeah, there'd be tons of people that want to be involved in that. Yes. Where they yes, talk surgeon. Kim Kardashian will be our first guest. Yeah. yeah, guess pinch hitter surgeon. I would do it. I would cut somebody for sure. <laughs> Let Jason cut. That's what we're going to call it. I'm good at stitches. Yeah? Yeah. You've yeah. done them? Uh, nah, I just pull them out. Of, I pull them <laughs> How out. How did of, you say you're good at them? Without because, ever doing them. Well, because I watched so many people do it. I know how to do it. <laughs> Have you actually given yourself stitches? No, nah, I just pulled them out of everybody. I yeah, pulled them out of cats. Different. I pulled them out. I pulled oh, them out yeah. of cats, dogs, babies. Yeah, same. Out like, of babies? Yeah. Yeah, my like brother. random on the street? Nah, or? my brother. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that looks healed. Can I? May I? <laughs> oh, I've asked. I'm like, if you need me to take that out right now, I'll do it. I used to have a scalpel. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I had to. Uh, I don't think I, it was I've, very I've clean. Stary strip myself enough when okay. I needed stitches that I'm very familiar with what it takes. Yeah. yeah. One time I, because I the needle, I didn't know that the needle really hurt, and I was like, every time I would get stitches, I'd be dreading the needle because they put it in and it hurts like really worse sure. than the stitches. I didn't realize that it worse than the stitches because they numbed it before they stitched you up. Yeah. And one time I had a really bad cut. I hit my leg on a clamp on a on a pole so it wasn't a cut it was more of like a a slot that had been made yeah. and uh i was like i don't want the needle you know what i mean in the in the urgent care i was like i don't want the needle the needle hurts and he's like really and i'm like yeah really and i was like kind of a bit of an attitude with him and he was like all right and and then shove that hook thing through my leg through the wound and i was like ah okay give me the needle and he was like i told you yeah, I, that but that was that I needed that because yeah. I was like, I, you guys with your needles, like you're just trying to inflict pain on me. Well, sometimes there's instances where I don't recommend the numbing medication. So, like, if the what procedure do you, do you is spray minor, it with something. No, but like, let's say, oh, I can. But I'm saying, if I'm going to inject your knee for like an osteoarthritis with a steroid, I'd rather give you one injection than two. Yeah, because that's the same with stem cells yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. I remember the first time. Because I've the numbing and PRP as well, where they're like, mm -hmm. I'm there's no point numbing it, yeah. I've got to get in there. And I was yeah. like, Oh no, like, I, I, I the immediately cold spray regret feels good. the what the cold spray, yeah. You th oh, just because it's the see, the little prick into the skin, mm -hmm. it's not my, I don't have no beef with that. Okay, it's the, it's the when repetitive. it goes, it's not, it's and it doesn't happen all the time. Stem, stem cells that only hurt one time. 
they hit something in my knee, a nerve, and that made me not feel good. But all the other yeah. parts where I was like, yeah, I feel it. It's not cool. But the nerve one triggers, like all of a sudden I was sweaty. Yeah. For the rest of the knee, the injections, I was like, if that happens again, I'm going to be sick. Mm -hmm. and it, but it didn't, so it wasn't. I've had patients pass out before. I bet. Because if you look at it, I think it makes it worse. I used to like look away the first couple of times I would watch it because I'm like, I don't know these guys. I'm in Colombia. Like, are they putting it in the right spot? You know, and I'm like, yep, that's in the right spot. And all of a sudden I'm like, Ooh. I like how you hadn't thought of those things beforehand. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not at all. <laughs> no, I didn't. I do want to go on the record saying that numbing cream, that doesn't work. No. It works for well, tattoos. Well, for what? Yeah. Works. I don't know. And when, when people say, or like they'll do it at, a, at the dentist. Mm. You know, I'll put numbing cream before, yeah. before I give you a shot. No, before they give you the shot where you still feel the needle intensely. Oh, sure. Like, yeah. I, Oh, I yeah. Don't, yeah. But know, it's or, not or as laser bad. laser treatments, whatever. See, I think you, because you've only had the numbing, you're like, man, it still hurts. But I think if they don't numb you, you're going to feel a, a way so? worse. Yeah, because I did that. I was like, don't give me the needle. Man, that was, I don't know. I don't believe not Rambo. the needle, the, like the, the topical. Yeah. Remember Rambo sewed himself up? Just for like one no. or two stitches. Do you before. remember? <laughs> you don't remember that? No. Remember Rambo, right? Sure. Remember yes. Rambo? Uh huh. Yeah. It, it one was of the greatest movies time, ever made. But yeah. But you remember it? <laughs> I mean, I was in an he America. Knows of Have you it. watched it? it? Came out. No. He doesn't. He's not required to watch it. Every what year did is, it come out? I don't know. It's out now. You can watch it right now if you want to. <laughs> Rambo. Google it. I mean, I know what it. it is. Well, anyway. He wow. fell out of a tree because he did his own stunts. Because it's all in like real that. time. For real. And he cut his arm open. And in the movie, he sews himself up. And I heard that it was real. <laughs> of course. And that he did. actually, like, he did, like, one or two stitches before the doctor <laughs> sewed him up. Wow. Can we Google that to see if that's factual? Because <laughs> if he didn't do that. I was his personal assistant on one of his movies. And I asked him, and that is real. Really? Yeah. That, he's like the only person in the world, in the world. that could have verified that. <laughs> I did, that's Way amazing. Than Google. <laughs> that destroys Google yes. and proves my point. Okay, I, I, rescind, I rescind my statement. People think totally I'm stupid. Real. Wow, okay. The yeah. You know. Not the only brain on the show. Clearly. <laughs> would, you, would you let me cut you and sew you up? For, 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 for YouTube. The pod, for, yeah. the, for the views. Yeah, for the views. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. I would do that for you. Thank you. <laughs> How did you become the, the the cutter and the sewer? He's, he's you not said just you could remove doctor. stitches. You never he's say anything about cutting. giving stitches. Yeah, but I know. I tell you, I know. You gotta do, do like it. a loop too. You know, it's it's there's a technique to it. It's like yeah. I saw it. It's like so. Okay, get around, get around, fucking tied up. <laughs> he snipped a little bits off. Right, but there's also but a not technique. too short. So not, not too short, right? Because yeah. you need to get it yeah. off later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I had a doctor. I had a. I used to go to this urgent care when I get my chin split open, which was a lot. And um, the last time I went to this urgent care doctor, he scolded me and he told me never to come back. Why? Because he said there's no more skin here for me to pull over this, and I can't work on it anymore. He was a crap doctor. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. It did. did it did feel odd to be scolded. Scolded and also to be ejected. Like. Yeah. I'll yeah. do this one, and that's it. You're out of here. Like, don't come back. Yeah, it don't, doesn't seem But, you know, fair. my are, like, he had a point. Sexy. Right? I mean, they look pretty. Yeah, they look good now. Yeah, yeah they, they've healed. Yeah. The body does well. What's that? The body does well. Yeah. That one's actually not too bad. Yeah, not too bad. What do you mean not too bad? They're hideous. No, they look good. Okay. That's, that's a, that's a Doctor, healthy shit. Right there. Uh. What's the biggest injury you've had? Uh, my left shoulder's all torn everywhere labrum rotator cuff from fighting or from fighting um i used to play soccer growing up and i was a goalie so like landing all the time oh, yeah. from jumps and stuff so will you do of... something to fix that physical therapy shoulder replacements suck huh big time when I've are had they going like steroid to... injections and stuff when shoulder. are they going to master that like they've mastered the knee and the hip I want them to do even better. I want them to be able to like clone ligaments and stuff. I think that's the future. I've heard about that. Yeah, I heard they're like they pretty can close grow to that, organs right? and right. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like that's what makes it. 3D print stuff. Yeah, especially with the help of AI these days. Like, 
Yeah, I need a 3D printed knee for sure. <laughs> that sounds pretty badass. What about if you replace it with something that's even stronger? Is that a, p a potential possibility? I don't know. Because I... Remember, the body has to like balance itself out. Yeah, right. so it, can be it too might rip off the bone, yeah, and then it'll rip the other parts. Yeah, so it needs to be like equally elastic and strong at the same My, time. One thing that I I regret taking literally was that when when I first got my when I first got my leg fixed, they said your leg is will never be stronger, like because I have this titanium rod in mm. it, mm. which was definitely not true. <laughs> right. Well, it didn't. Damn. How did it not? That because that's what I heard. You know, I, I it was kind of like I heard what I wanted to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I definitely heard that, and I was like, it's never going to be stronger. Yeah. I'm on my way. Well, well you know, you, when if you I can break just, a like, bone, I told myself I can push through the pain. I got this. Yeah. And then at some point, it was like, why is it always in pain? Yeah. Because I didn't listen to my body. Right. Well. In your defense, your body's stupid at trying to tell you that the leg wasn't attached. I know, but you know, you know, it's my fault. Maybe a little more pain next time. I do. Add, uh, one thing I know this is this is minor, but I am curious. How do you? What do you think about tape, like sports tape? When they, when they like, do you the mean like the KT the tape, yeah, or like the regular um, tape that NFL players use on their ankles? Yeah, that one. That Where one? they have it under tape, so that you don't rip your hair off. That tape. I don't know what the under tape is. You know how you have like the. the but I mean, do you think that 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 well, definitely increases stability? But yeah, also for the sure. ones that, that that will cross. Yeah, like the KT tape. The KT tape is different. It's not meant to give you that kind of support. Yeah, it it's meant to decrease some of the tension yeah. from the fascia, which will allow areas to heal and feel a little bit better. Got like it. the same way, you know, when you put but on I know compression a lot of gear, use it preemptively. That's why. Yeah. I'm yeah. Asking well, it's it. the same way. Like you know, when you put on compression gear, it feels good. Yeah, because the muscles are a little bit warmer, they're a little bit tighter, less less like give on them. Right. Um, and then also, when you have compression on an area, sometimes you have better awareness of where that body part is in space. It's called proprioception. So that's why you see like NBA players; they'll wear a sleeve on their shooting arm. Yeah. They'll they'll have better feeling of uh. where the arm is by having that added compression. Huh. Mitchy uses that stuff. And he yeah. Knows, and it he stinks. knows where he is in space. He does. Yeah. Yeah, I was more of a sports tape ankle and wrist guy because my ankles are so destroyed. But then I the 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 under tape is the stuff that you put on that's not sticky before you put the tape on, so mm. that when you cut the tape off, it doesn't rip all your hair off sure, you. Sure, sure. So I just shaved because I found that the, the tape, tape being better. stuck to the skin made the the ankle move less. Mm. So it was like a thing that I but I learned from medical stat like the guys the way they would just do it to me every day before the contest and I'm like, okay, I got it. And then I and then I yeah, couldn't and then if there was a time there where I, I couldn't skate without doing it. Yeah, with yeah. The I needed angles. it on there. Yeah, to do that's myself. terrible. Yeah. Do you know do you notice that the compression gear smells worse than regular clothes after you use it? Do you, have you seen that? And I can I give you the medical yeah, reason I as to used why that much. Oh, okay. I mean I, I will, definitely the the tape is not if great. If I train <laughs> and I wear a rash guard, I, I can tell that you can tell, yeah. Well because that the, the bacteria that lives on that is different than the bacteria that would go on cotton because cotton absorbs water. That material absorbs oil. Oh, wow. So wow. that material has different bacteria that eats on the oil and it stinks. Oh, that's fascinating. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's interesting. There's a lot of stinky wow. grapplers out there and now I know why. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't just mean their skills. No, no. I mean, like I start rolling with it and I'm like, man, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I, I'm curious, your take as a fighter on the Mark Zuckerberg, Elon Musk situation. <laughs> it's the dumbest. I, I, <laughs> like Dana White is dumb. Like, you're all dumb. It's just some, enough. Like, I love how he's like, at the UFC, we don't do gimmick fights. We do real fights with the highest level fighters in the world. I think Mark Zuckerberg <laughs> should fight. You see that dude wakeboard? Can you be any lamer of a human being? Like... Who taught you how to, who stands, so, how do you, you look like you're taking a shit on a toilet <laughs> while you're, like, how yeah, do you get that, your, that doesn't, that just shouldn't, that doesn't represent his, his fighting. He can't fight. Like, okay. He can't fight. I don't know. But no anyway, offense. Did you see the picture? You can't fight. He added, there's a recent photo of him. We can't and, fight. And he looks, Why? he looks in shape. We're not good enough to be in the UFC. Oh. Have some respect I saw, for the I UFC. I saw the photo you're talking the about. But he looks in shape. Yeah, right? he looks yeah. really good with that. Yeah, but he can't fight. Okay. But we don't know. We don't know. What? Yes, we do. But you're assuming. 
No, I'm not. And you know what I happens saw, when we I assume. saw a video of him. He can't fight. There's levels. You can say that you're a kickboxer. But he's not you... fighting a UFC fighter. Yeah, I was going to say. It's, yeah, it's, he's no, fighting Elon the Musk. The bar has been set pretty I'm, low. Yeah, but it's still a really low-level fight and a, at a high organization. Low-level fight, high entertainment value. You, if it raises I, a billion see, for I charity, feel, you don't think it's worthwhile? Okay, but that's a different question. You're asking me if it's a if it's a good idea to have it in the UFC. I think oh, it's stupid. Okay, got it. Okay. I think it's disrespectful to all the real fighters. But is it a in good idea in general? general? If it makes a billion dollars for charity, yeah. yeah. But like, can't you just say welcome to clown fights and have these douches do it? Because I'm telling you, you guys think it's going to be exciting. It's not. They're going to fall on the ground and start butt jabbing each other. They don't know how to fight. <laughs> it's not going to go punch for that punch. That actually sounds entertaining. So. Yeah. Nobody's, nobody's <laughs> I'm on his side. You want Because all people that don't know fighting, when guys are on the <laughs> ground don't, not yeah, doing don't. anything, yeah. the crowd's like, boo, stand them yeah. up. That's what's going to happen. Yeah. They can't stand and fight. So maybe they should box. Yeah. Well, are you? then what are your feelings on Naganu and uh, Fury? Stupid again. Really? Yeah. That dude. That dude can't box. He's the worst boxer in MMA. But it's like the, the excitement of power versus skill. Wait, you don't think Tyson and I don't Fury? Believe you it. don't think Tyson Fury's powerful? No, but the power of Naganu is like. Yeah, but it's 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 he's a worse boxer than I am. And if I boxed Tyson Fury and I was seven feet tall, it would make it worse for me because I'm bigger and I can take more punishment. But make no mistake. Francis Ngannou will not land one punch on that dude, and that dude will embarrass the shit out of him. I mean, I agree with the you, but I want to watch The greatest lineal it. heavyweight <laughs> boxer. It is, it's entertainment. Yeah. It's the greatest boxer that ever lived. He's just a naysayer. Yeah. I'm, I'm okay. Watch it. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not watching any of them. I, I, that's I like, don't care. It's He's like watching them. You don't, you, don't, you don't watch contact sports? No. Not really, no. Uh, okay. my, my, our kids are in the UFC a yeah. lot, so... Mm. I get pulled in sometimes, but um, but you and, made and it. You made it less annoying him. Okay, with fair. the charity thing. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's why. Yeah. yeah. If it gives the money to charity, then True. yeah. Then I'm I sure they're everybody... not going to do it for a paycheck for themselves. Right. They don't need it. Yeah. Right. When you're that would be worth amazing. 150 saying, billion, <laughs> that would be amazing though. I've, as a guy I that... am not stepping in the ring for less than. <laughs> yeah. I've I've organized. I've had people fight. I had an event, Ellis Mania. I've had fights for 20 years. I've organized people that don't know how to fight fighting each other. And I can tell you that if you don't, if you're not high level in MMA, same with amateur MMA fights, it goes to the you, you come, you clash, you get tangled, you fall on the ground, and if you're both like white belts or blue belts, because I'm assuming that's the best they're going to get to by by the time they fight, you just kind of squeeze and you, you know what I mean, Ugh, and there's no real technique, there's no strategy, you're just sort of like gassing out on each other. It's really a war of attrition. It'll be who has more gas in the tank to finish this uh, this grappling nightmare because nobody's going to punch each but other. But what if Elon gets like a Neuralink thing that helps him strategize better? Yeah, good <laughs> idea. <laughs> These are tech guys at the end of I the day. I think it'd be like, better if they fought like in a, in a dome and they had those like jet arms <laughs> on their legs and their ankles that would be so that they could fly into yes. each other and fight because they can't now fight. Now you're talking. Yeah. They can't fight at all. Thank wow. you for that. That's a better visual. I like okay, that. Yeah, yeah, ten. I like that. And Francis Ngannou is going to get paid, like you know, hopefully like ten, twenty million dollars yeah. to get destroyed. There you go. Destroyed. There's, wow. there's, there's his expert opinion. Maybe uh, so destroyed that he can't <laughs> fight again. Ooh, that, that. There you go. That's Tyson Fury is so good. Well, I'm curious who you think punches harder, Naganu or um, Bronze Bomber Wilder. Um. Because I was at that fight. Yeah, I would say when it gets to that level, I don't think it really matters. Like yeah, if it touches true. you, you're yeah. going to sleep. Yeah. But I would say the bomber has a has better a technique and they both throw as hard. Yeah. And, and I also feel like the the hardest punch on record for Francis at the UFC Institute is slightly bullshit. You know, like it, they got a, it just so happens that they're heavyweight. Do they have one hot. of those machines? Is that how it works? Yeah, that's not true either. But, but yeah, it doesn't. It, he hits really hard. But he's got a four ounce glove on versus a twelve ounce, True. so there is a little bit of difference. But I think when it comes to uh, Deontay Wilder, I don't think I've ever seen anybody hurt another heavyweight in a way where I'm like, "Wow, that right hand doesn't." It really does something to everybody. I think Francis is more 
he's such a giant guy, but his technique is really bad. Like the punch that he landed uh, to knock out Alistair over him was his his hook was almost against the ground before it came up. You know from boxing, that is a terrible technique. It's terrible. If you're not experienced as a fighter, that technique can work in your favor. Yeah, he's won which several Which is why fights. I struggled against an MMA fighter. Oh, okay. But if you're a pro boxer, that will never work. No, that's a, that's why Mayweather destroyed McGregor. At right. The end of the day. It's like there's a way, there's levels to it. And if you're a boxer and you're not allowed to kick, you're not allowed to hold on, and you're just throwing these big haymakers, like that dude laughs at that. Why can't we get like social media people to start skateboarding instead of boxing? Yeah. Can we start like well, a I, YouTube I'm, skateboarding? Down. Sure. They're, it, won't they're be welcome. it won't be fun. <laughs> yeah. Why? They'll suck. Because it takes 10 years to yeah. like hit the top of the ramp. Fair. So you're not going to, no one's dropping in. Yeah. Like if Mark there'll be, Zuckerberg. There'll be a lot of slams, a lot of good content. <laughs> that would be content. cool. <laughs> if it was just celebrity yeah. drop, celebrities yeah. dropping in on Vert, I would watch that. Oh, man. You know, <laughs> just, you know after we interviewed Lil Wayne, I went and saw the Ty Dollar Sign slam. Yeah. It's gnarly. He was in hospital, right? Oh, it, was, it was like straight back, Oof. like. <laughs> yeah, it was bad. <laughs> Sorry. Bad. So um, funny. So, Dr. Mike, do you have any uh, of parting <laughs> advice for us? Even though you're slightly later in life for both of you. Wow. That was that really was funny. Oh, was I was hoping more for a general what? audience, but go oh, ahead. No, that, but that was the, <laughs> I'm going to remember that. He said that really. Life. I barely felt the pain of that. That was good. Yeah. As Gen that Xers. Was real, man, that was life. very generous. No, no, no. Continue. You As young gentlemen asshole. full of wisdom. Yeah. Yeah, and experience. Um, I would still encourage age. you to invest in your health because it's still going to pay dividends and you could live invest 100 how? more years. Invest by doing the things. Sleeping. Sleeping. Right. The what if you're a things. comedian? <laughs> what, you, don't, you don't get yeah, to sleep as much. The sleep schedule's kind of uh, rough, but. Yeah. I mean, the consistency is important. Meditation? Important. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else? Vegetables or anything? Yeah, I mean, you want all the things? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so sleeping seven to nine hours a night. Yeah. Plant-focused diet. Doesn't mean you have to go vegan, but plant-focused. Trying yeah. to get your fruits and vegetables in there. Um, trying to limit your saturated fat to some degree, which you will do by yeah. eating a plant-focused diet. Keeping friendships around, which you guys seem like yeah. you have that locked down. Focusing on your mental health and yeah. not ignoring when things are going awry there. Yeah. Um, and last but not least, 150 minutes of moderate intensity exercise every week. I'm going to live for a long time. I have great oh, friends. Oh, and avoiding bad habits like heavy alcoholism, smoking, all that stuff. Ah. Oh. What about weed? That's good for you, well, right? What about it? It's, like good, how, it's like, good for you, right? <laughs> good for you? No. Yeah. No, I would not say it's good for you. Well, yeah, but you don't know that much. You lost your fight, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just saying, I'm undefeated. <laughs> sure, Doc. You me. can agree to disagree on that one. Yeah, How's I'm going to. All right. Yeah. It's a plant. Yeah, I'm neutral. Diet. I'm neutral on that. I mean, yeah. cyanide is natural. Ooh, sick burn. Yeah, I'm going to pretend I didn't get it <laughs> slightly. All right. <laughs> Dr. Mike, thank you. Well, thank yeah, you so thank much you. for having me. Thanks this for stopping by our, our new East Coast studio. Yeah. You're the first guest. Well, I, I'm hoping to bring you more to the East Coast. We'll try. I don't mind that. Yeah. Sounds it's fun good. out here. Yeah, I like pizza. Yeah. Wait, There's good is that comedy. bad? There's good Do you comedy. eat pizza? I mean, I eat pizza it's just every now and then. Yeah, with your plant-based diet. Yeah. See, you can do so. You can do both. Ice cream. I mean, yeah. Like, do you eat dairy ice cream or do you eat dairy ice cream? You do. Yeah. He's just he's just talking about moderation. You're yeah, like, I'm like a, I'm a I'm a regular person. There's yeah. a lot of people out there that want to know. Oh, what is doctor? Like, first of all, doctors are the biggest hypocrites. So like, don't look for doctors yeah. what they do. Man, I, like, I had a doctor that was like a real big fat guy and he was giving me HGH, like a, a lot of it. And I was yeah. like, I heard that this could be bad. Like, and he's like, no, it's not bad at all. <laughs> Look at me. He goes, he goes, they give it to, can to children that have cancer. So how's it going to give you cancer if they give it to kids with cancer? And I'm like, yeah. But then I was oh, like, that's really how are you that fat? Not sound logic. And a doctor, because it's like, I could give you advice right now. Be like, hey, man, how much water have you had today? <laughs> how, about, how about a plant-based diet? Yeah, because you, you your face, his face is red. I was like, you drink like a lot. Well, doctors have historically given out some terrible advice. You know, doctors used to recommend smoking for asthma. Like the, Ox the head doctor of Oxford used to say that a good way to prevent a nighttime asthma attack is to fill the room with cigarette smoke. I don't believe anybody anymore. <laughs> 
It's all lies. What do you mean? That's timeless advice. <laughs> Still works. I do the, that the every The timeless night. advice is unless there's actual evidence, expert opinion shouldn't be held in that high regard. Is psilocybin good for you? Good for you in what sense? Like just to take? Yeah. I would not recommend it for people just to take. This guy doesn't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> That shit is okay, so I'm not going to tell you We're stop done. taking it. <laughs> <laughs> With that statement. <laughs> I don't want to be responsible. Yeah, exactly. For that statement. I believe him, for the record. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Like this guy knows anything. I know what to believe. <laughs> Good luck, you guys. Like and believe. I'm going to spirit world. Like, subscribe, and believe. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>